So thanks for joining us, um, Izzy and Rose, um, talking Commonwealth Games. Was it always a dream for both of you guys to play at the Commonwealth Games? Well, I think for me, I was quite young going into it. I hadn't really thought about it yet. And it was all quite a whirlwind for me because I like, came into the senior programme in September and then they mentioned like Commonwealth next year. And I was like, oh, yeah, kind of didn't really realise. And then went through the process and ended up just like getting further and further and when I got selected it was like yeah it was crazy I was really excited and um didn't think I'd be there that soon but I think yeah when I was younger it was a it was a dream to to do yeah Rose yeah I'm probably a little bit older and wise uh <laughs> not wise just older um but I would say that most definitely um it's always been a dream um, to play at Commonwealth Games, um, particularly cemented when I was around the senior team when they were getting ready for Delhi. Um, it was a lot younger then, but I had a, lots of exposure. Um, and even things like the kit trying on, all the excitement around just before they went, I was really lucky to be have a little bit of an insight into that. Um, and then obviously there was Glasgow as well. Um, so then to be able to um, go to uh, 2018, to go to Gold Coast was, was amazing. Um, yeah, a real dream come true. Yeah, and um, both got quite differing journeys to getting to the Commonwealth Games, where you sort of had to pick yourself up from uh, disappointment of missing out on um, Glasgow. How did you pick yourself up from that um, to make sure you cemented your place at 2018? Yeah, I think um, I just took a little bit of a break after 2014, um, moved down to Surrey, changed clubs, went to the Wimbledon uh, club. First time I played in conference, really. So I was um, really pushing myself on that side of things. And then on a kind of a fitness and nutrition basis, I just reevaluated myself as an athlete um, completely and, and reassessed what my goals were. And, and I knew that absolutely I still wanted to go to a Commonwealth Games. So I just knew the changes I needed to put in place to do that. Yeah, and Izzy, being so young, was it quite daunting when you found out that you were going into this group of like senior players? Yeah, it was. I'd done some like trips with them. We went to Gran Canaria before, and it, I kind of always felt like I was just getting this experience, just keep getting experience, experience it under my belt. And I didn't really like expect to go to the Commonwealth Games. It was quite for me. It was quite a shock. Like I kind of played it quite chill. I was like, yeah, I'm just like going to these camps, just keeping it quite relaxed. You're always quite chill. Yeah, I didn't want to like, you know, set all my hopes and dreams on it and like, you know, because I had my A-levels that year as well and stuff, there was a lot going on, like decisions for my life as well. So I just, it was just, yeah, a really good surprise when I got that email. And it was also the same day I passed my driving test, so it was a very good day. Oh, nice. Yeah. And um, yeah, being so young, talking about doing your A-levels then, People, most people when they're 18, they're just probably thinking about going uni. It was it quite a whirlwind kind of couple of months? Like you're going to a Commonwealth Games and you're finishing your A-levels, maybe you think about yeah. going to Well, yeah, I spoke to my teachers and I was like, by the way, guys, I'm going to go away for three weeks. Like, it, I think it was in like March time, so it's quite close. Um, and I said, like, I think I can do it. I can revise when I'm out there. Like, I think I know my stuff. Um, and they trusted me. They were like, yeah, my, my parents trusted me to to work as well and I wasn't going to miss the opportunity to go like there was not a thought in my head that was like A levels or come up games it was like right I'm doing both um but yeah it was quite stressful and looking back on that year now I'm kind of thinking oh my god how did I do it because A levels and all that stuff going around is quite quite scary but yeah it worked out for the best yeah and what was that moment like when you found out you were in the squad um how did you guys find out it's like an email process or to someone ring you and it was the same day your driving test right yeah so i was sat on pizza express because i um, passed my tri driving test and i remember taking it out for dinner and i knew the selection was coming out but i was just really excited to pass my driving test and we were sat in pizza express and i got the email and i was like mum i'm going to australia and she was like oh my gosh like <laughs> yeah crazy yeah most you remember the moment that you found out you're in the squad yeah, it's, it's the same it is around the email coming through. Um, I was just at home actually, but um, yeah, it was it's pure pure relief and excitement um, all mixed in, and and really, um, it's a bit of a surreal moment. I think um, for me, it probably didn't set real really settle in until we walked out for the opening ceremony to really feel like the magnitude of what we were about to do. But but finding out was was obviously a brilliant moment too. 
Yeah. Did you feel it sort of like killed a few demons of 2014 when you found out you were in the squad? Um, no, not so much because I, I felt like I'd already put that behind um, by that point because otherwise it's a lot of negativity to harbour for quite a long time. Um, but I, I would say probably the moment I said before when I was in the opening ceremony was a moment I really felt like it was full circle and any kind of last feelings around that I felt were completely gone and I felt like I was um, really justified to, to be there and I, I felt really positive around that but but no I think four years is a bit too long to hold on to that for. Yeah fair enough and talking about that like opening ceremony like what was that like as an experience? Oh you know me I love waving to crowds and uh, shouting about so that was really fun. Um, I distinctly remember Joe Westwood just walking around flossing the whole time because that was still a thing. Um, but yeah, it was it was brilliant. It was just like a big party and it was lovely, amazing to see so many um, Welsh athletes as well and all different sports that I actually um, ignorantly didn't know participated in, in the Commonwealth Games and it was amazing just to have talk speak to them and talk about their journeys as well. I don't know how you found it is. It seemed a bit, it was a bit, bit wild in there, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was just very surreal because... I remember, I remember when I was in like 360, the, the little sessions that we did when I was younger and I remember watching one of the Welsh men, he like took a, I think he took like a selfie stick with him and he did the whole video and I just remember sitting there thinking like that's so cool like I really want to go do that. So when I walked out, um, yeah, it was just crazy just to be in like that team and just walk around with the yeah, people like clapping and like cheering, it was really fun. Yeah, and it being a multi-sport event, like you talk about speaking to people from other sports, what sort of sports did you guys mingle with? And did you get to watch many of them when you were out there? I didn't get to watch many. I think the thing is with the, the hockey is that it tends to be um, over the entire time. So, for example, like weightlifting, they'll kind of do their um, event in a short period of time. And then you could see them afterwards kind of relaxing and and enjoying their last kind of week or so in Australia, regardless of, of how they've done and what's been going on. But with hockey, because the tournament um, kind of breaches a lot, a lot, a large period of those dates, um, we tend to be kind of in, in focus mode that time. Um, but yeah, it was nice to be, and also just kind of catch up at the hub and, and, and see where everyone's successes as well. Um, and, and you could run into people and check in. I think, you know, after one of our games, everyone was just really cheering us on and clapping us through the through the village as we were going, and that was amazing as well. Just being able to share the success with Team Wales. And what was the uh, athletes' village like for you guys there? Yeah, it was so much fun. I did not expect like that size and that you know, it being so modern and just new, and like all the things like free coffee, free vending machines. Like, yeah, that was just really cool perks that you're like oh that's that's nice um and uh, just living the life of an athlete where you're treated just pretty well it's just really different and you feel quite honored and privileged as well to be in that position where you can experience all those things um and like I got to rise for my levels like sat by a pool with loads of fun people and well, it was a bit distracting but um <laughs> I got my work done and it was in a cool place so <laughs> uh -huh. Uh, Rose, did you enjoy the experience of the Athletes Village? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, like Izzy said, the pool was a nice perk and obviously the Australian weather really helps bring that experience together. Um, seeing that many athletes around from all different countries across the world was, was also um, was pretty, pretty impressive as well. And just kind of seeing lots of different cultures coming together and, and dancing and celebrating. I really enjoyed that um, before the kind of games got going. Um, obviously, can't go without mentioning the food hall. Um, which I'd been told around, uh, told about, sorry, and, and um, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I do think I probably gained weight, too much weight, while I was at the Commonwealth Games. Um, but that's fine. I think that's why you um, slim down and, and get your nutrition right before you go. I think you have to just overdo it a little bit so you can uh, pile on a little bit more on your rest days. Um, yeah, I think the pancake station wasn't good on that last couple of days when the Games was finished. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we had a tan from the weather, so that was good. Did you enjoy the food hall as much as Rose, Izzy? Yeah, it was just really exciting just to be in there. And then you'd be like sat in your food, and then you'd see like, like I don't know, an athlete that you'd know, like walk past. You might be like famous or like you follow Instagram or something. And that was quite cool because you'd get to like sit near them. Um, and like, 
Yeah, all the food was like amazing. And Izzy, you make your debut at 18 against India. What a game that must have been to make your debut. Yeah, that, I didn't really think about it until after because I, I did some matches. Like we had some non-official matches. So I just kind of went into it like that. But when I walked out and saw like how high the stadium was, like the whole place, um, the first thought was like, oh my gosh, my mum is probably sat there like really nervous for me. Like, I was thinking about her. And then, yeah, the game was just amazing. And like afterwards, I was like, I can't, I'm like really lucky that was my first cap. Um, and it was really fun to share it with Caro as well. Because um, we were both kind of in it together and just kind of a bit new to the thing. But um, yeah, it was really exciting. And yeah, probably a really proud moment of mine. Yeah, Mo, is it safe to say that game was quite a busy one for you in goal? Um, yeah, we, we, were quite, we were quite busy in back end of the pitch for that one. Um, but, you know, we showed a lot of resilience there and it was an incredible game. And we took our chances um, and the confidence was really high. There's a real buzz about the team before the game. Um, I distinctly remember in kind of debrief and, you know, Kev deconstructing India and, and showing us that actually we could beat these players. And, and especially we united as a team, we could do that. And um, I could really feel that positivity when we were out on the pitch and celebrating things like Izzy's first cap. It was, it was just brilliant to be able to do that. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a, a nervy one, but um, yeah, still one of my favourite games I've ever played in. Um, yeah, it was absolutely amazing. Yeah, what was your feelings like when the final whistle went and you know you guys had beaten India? Relief. <laughs> I would say, because that was that what six minutes to go with that from that last goal, just kind of holding on to make sure there were no issues. And I remember that um, uh, Tina got injured uh, literally in the last kind of seconds and she had the ball in the D and I remember just screaming at her to get rid of it, um, even though she was injured because I was so worried about something you're going to upgrade and, and you know, us losing that win the last few seconds. And, and Tina's an absolute hero, so she would always take that. But... Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was just relief and and just ecstatic. Couldn't believe it. And and the crowd was so behind us. I think the the crowd that Australia brought were just amazing. And the fact that often they would really root for the underdog, and which meant that I felt like we had about ninety percent of the crowd behind us. So when we won, I just heard a big roar. It really added to the atmosphere. I don't know if if you even kind of let that noise. Um, Kind of penetrate for, for you is whether you actually even heard any of that yeah I remember when the whistle went and I just I was like before I was so stressed I was just like just gotta get through it just like keep calm um yeah and then when at the end of it I just it was very surreal and I think I it was really nice seeing how much it meant particularly for like the old ones in the group as well because um obviously they've had like a history of playing for Wales and seeing what that meant to them was just really exciting and really like motivated me as well because I was like yes like this this is really good and um yeah I had to being so excited. Izzy yeah. set the bar really with her first cap and now <laughs> the expectations are really high every time so <laughs> we're looking at knocking top 10 off as much as possible. <laughs> nice uh Izzy do you remember like going over to your family after the after the game at all? Yeah I do and they were really excited. My family are very chill anyway. They, they, yeah, they came after, they were like, well, that's a good one. I was like, yeah, pretty damn good. Like, really fun. And they, they were just, I think, really proud. And I don't think my mum could just get over the, the actual atmosphere. Um, and she was like, yeah, Izzy, I can't believe like, these people were like, paid to come watch you play. Like, I was like, yeah, I know, it's just it's crazy. And the fact that we won, everyone was just so, excited and I had so many messages on my phone like oh my god well done like um and then all like the girls were joking being like um Izzy you're so lucky that that was your first cap don't expect it to be like every single time we play because you know it's not every time we go to this amazing like athletes village and play these teams and I was like yeah yeah, yeah. so the bar was set very high from day one <laughs> and what was the rest of the tournament like results didn't kind of go your way as much as they did in that India game. Do you remember, but still foul moments representing Wales. Do you remember much of the the, the other games? Yeah, like, um, I think the like the middle games were quite frustrating because I always felt like we did play quite well, but we just never got the results. Um, and yeah, like, I learned so much from that experience anyway, like all the debriefs 
just the actual game playing like you just learn so much you just pick up the little nuances that you would never get from just playing like at a club or even a younger level and to deal to learn to deal with the pressure and kind of learn to deal with like repeated pressure as well because it wasn't just like one big game against India it was oh we have to play more and more, more and more games and kind of looking after myself recovery I learned so much about that because I never really considered that before as much um, and just like the lifestyle of being an athlete in a tournament I think I learned so much from that um, and from all like the other girls they were so helpful to me on the pitch the communication was really good to me um, so I, yeah I just, I just learned those. Yeah, Mose, what was the rest of the games like sort of for you? Yeah, I think Izzy summed it up quite well. I think we did have to go on a little bit of a learning curve. I think the England performance was, was pretty good. We were really close in it until the final quarter. Um, I think that, um, as, yeah, as we went in towards kind of South Africa, that was a really hot game. And I think we were quite um, disappointed to not quite come off with, with the results for that. And, and I think it was probably, yeah, the kind of knock-on effect of just kind of missing out by the time we kind of got to Malaysia and Ghana and it and it and it's took its toll a little bit um I feel like to have have had such a high in the first game we just needed to look at kind of sustaining that but that's definitely something we identified as a group and and we've moved forward to develop um which I think is really really important but um yeah they were still brilliant experiences we still did well um within that but I think it's hard to replicate such a high for, from the India game and um but you guys did end on a high winning on penalties against Ghana um as a goalkeeper, Rose, that must have been nice for you. Yeah, um, I, w I wouldn't say it was as enjoyable. Um, just bec just because it was it was a bit of a it was a bit of a scrappy, difficult game. I think we were quite disappointed to have drawn to be in that position. Um, I personally was a little bit just frustrated by, by that, um, but I'm pretty good at kind of fueling fueling um, my using my fuel of my anger and, and kind of channeling it in the right way and. Um, yeah, I think again we'd done a lot of practice on the shootouts, um, but it was it was quite different to have a first shootout uh, in front of such a big crowd at a Commonwealth Games that was also being streamed live on BBC. So um, that had added elements of, of pressure, but I simply remember in the moment that it's easier just to kind of fade everything else away and just focus on the individual with the ball until afterwards. Yeah, and there's a lot of focus on the goalie at uh, penalty shootouts and their preparation, trying to figure out which way they're going to go. Were you able to do that kind of research with these Ghanaian players? Um, no, not really, but we played them already. So you could, uh, you could cite um, individual players and what they're more likely to do. And also in the game, as you, that progresses, you can see that. Um, but ultimately... Um, with that it's just about keeping on your feet as long as possible staying in it as much as possible rather than kind to um you know show them different areas and manipulate them in that manner um it's easy just to kind of stay in the stay in it i mean i didn't in the first one she sat me on my bum straight away i was just lucky enough that she missed a goal but after that i managed to sort myself out two years to go till the um Commonwealth games in birmingham is that something that you guys are starting to think about or is it still maybe too far ahead to think about um, but I get when I, when the games ended in Australia, I was kind of like, oh, I've got another four years to wait now. Like it's gonna be ages away. But it's actually come around really quick. And I was actually in Birmingham last weekend, and I went to the where the library is in the centre, and they've got the clock, and it's like how many days like countdown. And that I saw that, and I was like, oh, like it's actually not that far away. Like something I can look forward to and like motivate myself towards. Yeah, I think Izzy's is completely right. You think four years and then all of a sudden we've blinked. I mean, we've blinked and we've missed half a year already. But um, yeah, I think it'll be, it's quite a strange time. We've obviously got Europeans coming up as well, which is also a huge focus. So by the time um, we've completed within that, it'll just be um, just under a year to kind of to go from there. So this is a huge two years for, for our team. Um, so I'm really excited to see the games we've made um, you know off the pitch and how we have been able to virtually but also when we can get back together um, I'm really excited to see what we can do. Yeah how excited are you guys to be getting back together as a squad and uh, training again for these upcoming Europeans and Commonwealth Games? It will be nice to see everyone's faces um, and, and do, do things a little bit even if it has to you know be in small groups or however it's going to be it would be nice for us to be able to train appropriately. Um, and maybe even get some matches under the belt. I think 
that that's really difficult, isn't it? Around what's being allowed with which what phases and protocols around things like fixtures. But again, everybody else is in the same boat. So it would be nice just for team kind of cohesion and, and being able to kind of catch up with everybody and see everyone soon. Yeah, and is it you looking forward to seeing everyone again, hopefully soon? Yeah, like I think before because it was like once a month we go down and train, like you can't take it for granted, but when it's gone, you just think, Oh, like you just want to go back to those moments again, even like the small moments of just like chatting with your teammates or just catching up or like doing like you know, just like fun things. And even like the training itself, just getting back to that level, I think I'm just quite excited to do that. I feel like I've had a long enough like time off now and I'm ready to to go at it again. Yeah, so thanks for your time. Good luck on your journeys towards the uh, Commonwealth Games.